Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number six, The History of the Earth and the History of the Human Race. This is lecture number six in a series of continuing lectures of Gnostic Foundation teachings. I would like to introduce for this lecture Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. It's a real honor to be here. This is an incredible information, a combination of esoteric science with common science, common ground science, and then incredible discoveries done already that need to be shared with everyone on earth. So when we say that the history of human race has to be rewritten, we are not wrong. We believe there is an urgent need to do that. And this is our cooperation, collaboration with the scientific community. When we say, for example, that K people are not our ancestors, we are not saying anything wrong. Because in reality, we didn't evolve from monkeys, gorillas, you know, into K people and after here we are. This is absolutely incomplete and of course wrong. What happened is that Mr. Darwin was incomplete. We said in other lectures that evolution is on the part of the wheel of life. We have the other half of the wheel, which is involution. Evolution is an ascension. When we touch the highest point of evolution, half of the wheel, we descend. We don't ascend anymore. We call that involution. So Mr. Darwin never saw that. So we don't descend from monkeys. At the contrary, monkeys descend from people like you and me, like us, who enter into a stage of complete degeneration, cellular degeneration. Now, we are going to try to explain that later. Right now, we should talk about the birth of our planet Earth, history of the Earth. Native people, have said in a very intelligent manner that the moon is our grandmother and the earth is our mother. And they are right, because in reality the moon is a planet that existed before the planet earth was created and evolved up to the actual point. In reality the moon used to be a planet that eventually died. Every moon in the universe is a dead planet. They used to be, you know, living organisms that carry life within. Plants, trees, forests, jungles, rivers, lakes, oceans, mountains, and all kinds of species, including people like you and me. Well, after a cycle that we are also living here on Earth, the moon perished, died. It transformed into a dead planet. So the Earth appeared then, after trillions of years, the Earth descended. All life, remember my words, all life descends from the Absolute. Mr. Albert Einstein, you know, considered the man of the millennium, a true genius according to science. He said that science without religion lames. Religion without science is blind. So we do agree with him because we have to say that we don't agree with the Big Bang theory. Sincerely, for Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology, it is a laughing matter. It means that according to them, life came after a huge cosmic explosion in the universe. Come on, you know, this is absolutely ridiculous, sincerely. You know, life can only descend from life. Doesn't it make sense? Life can only come from life. So the absolute explained in all ancient religions is the spiritual universe where all life descended. You know, it's a spiritual universe. Is a, you know, behind every physical sun, there is a spiritual sun. 
So there are many absolute suns, part of an absolute universe. And all those suns created the physical suns or stars and all universe, all universes have been developed. Remember that we said before that our galaxy is a living, gigantic organism. Well, basically, this is the way it is. So, the spirit animates matter. The spirit is pure light that descended from the Absolute to create the universe and to create all species. So, matter is the vehicle of the spirit to move within the universe. We could also say the wardrobe of the spirit. So, the Absolute created our planet Earth. When the moon died, a new planet appeared, and here we are. We are. So, according to Kabbalah or numerology, there is two important cosmic laws that we have to be able to understand. The law of three, number three, is the law of creation, and law of seven is the law of organization. So, the law of three is everywhere. It is everywhere. You know, if we speak about water, okay, we are made of water in a tremendous percentage. 80-90% we are made of water. And that carries within that water all minerals and, you know, all elements of nature are within that water that we are made of. Now, if we analyze water, we say it's the combination of oxygen and hydrogen. Are you sure about that? If we put a molecule of oxygen and another molecule of hydrogen, we can create an artificial cell, artificial molecule. But it won't last longer, do you know why? Because something, the most important part of that cell won't be there. The spirit won't be there. And what's the spirit? It's light, crystallized into fire. So the third element of water is again hydrogen, oxygen, and fire. So when we write H2O to describe water, that formula is incomplete. Listen to this. Scientists of the world, students of chemistry and physics, try to comprehend life in a deeper way and stop being superficial. So this is the point. The law of three is everywhere. Every particle of the universe is based on the law of three. And the law of seven is the organization, based on the seven musical notes. You know, the music has a, you know, a reality, a tremendous reality. Music makes the planets move around within the universe. Planets and universes dance according to the rhythm of that music that we cannot hear because our ears are atrophied. Now, so to explain better now the creation of the Earth, the Earth has been created and also evolves and devolves or involves and will return originally life that was planted in our planet will return spiritually to the Absolute. Okay, so let's try to describe now what's happening within our planet Earth. We can speak about the seven rounds. Number seven again, the law of organization of life everywhere. Cosmolo cosmologically speaking or anthropologically speaking. So the seven rounds have been described by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky she is one of the founders of Theosophical Society and described, you know, after with, by Samael Onveor, you know, the founder of Gnostic Anthropology, the leader of Gnostic groups worldwide. And it's important that now we can try to describe and explain them. All ancient religions speak about that also. So the seven rounds, you see, we are going to explain them, you know, in a more detailed manner. Right now, we should also speak about in every planet, 
seven races are developed. Number seven again. We said in another lecture that in every planet there is life. That life doesn't have to be cellular. It could be molecular. It could be atomic. But there is life everywhere, except in the moons. We said that all moons are cosmic cadavers, cosmic, you know, dead planets. So the seven races were, are also described by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky and Samael Anveur. And we are going to be explaining them one by one. Let's come back to the seven rounds, the different stages that planet Earth has lived already and was going to continue living after we are not here any longer, physically speaking. So the first round, the first round, the Earth was first atomic or mental. You know that every thought is atomic. So the first planet Earth that was created and appeared within the universe was a transparent planet. Probably a lot of gas, you know. And through our telescopes, we see many planets that are beginning, you know, the process of birth. But it doesn't mean that there is no life there. Of course there is life. So when the first planet Earth appeared in the universe, within our solar system, it was atomic, which means mental, and there were already a species within it. There were minerals, there were also atomic. There were plants, trees, flowers, atomic. There were animals, there were also atomic. And there were people, like you and me, that were also atomic or mental. You see, the second round, our planet Earth, another planet Earth interconnected with the first was molecular. Molecular, or we can also call the astral. In esoteric language, people speak about the astral universe and the astral bodies. Well, the astral and molecular is also connected with emotions. You know that emotions are molecular, thoughts are atomic. So the second planet Earth was molecular, astral, emotional the foundation of emotions. Now, again, there were the species there. You see, mineral kingdom, molecular. Plants, trees, flowers, vegetal kingdom, also molecular. Animals, they were also molecular. We could say transparent to the human eye. And finally, people like you and me, also molecular. The third round, the earth became etheric, which is, you know, the ether or the etheric uh, dimension was described by Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein discovered the fourth dimension. The ether is connected with the fourth dimension. So when we leave our planet and travel within space, we will experience the ether is very much everywhere within the space and also in our planet Earth. So this is also connected with the elect electromagnetic field of everything. You know, we entered already the fourth dimension with the discovery of computers, you know, radios, televisions, cell phones, etc. The electromagnetic field interconnects all other, you know, parallel universes. So the third planet Earth was etheric. Again, humanities lived, lived there. They were etheric, transparent people, animals, plants, trees, and also a mineral kingdom. Electro electromagnetic life on Earth. Today, we are living within the fourth round of our planet Earth. The fourth round is a cellular round, physical round, ruled by three dimensions, three dimensions. So the first round and the second round are part of the fifth dimension. 
The third round is the fourth dimension. And now the fourth round, the physical and cellular, is connected with the three dimensions. Height, length, and width, if we remember all of that. There is a moment that our cellular planet Earth won't be any longer. And, and we are getting closer to that. You know that we have advanced more than a half of the way into moving into a, another parallel universe. So we will explain that, you know, in a few minutes. So when the planet Earth dies from a cellular point of view, when all life cellular, people like you and me, animals, plants, trees, flowers, and the mineral kingdom, all made of cells, when they all die, when we die, we will disappear from the cellular universe of the planet Earth. But we are all going to be moving into the fifth round, which is returning now. Re listen to my words carefully. We'll be returning to the absolute, the homeland of the spirit. The spiritual universe, you know, that we cannot perceive with no one instrument. And of course, we can only see, you know, an expression, a manifestation of the absolute to what we call the black holes. So the black holes are the connection, the bridge between the universe and the absolute. So we, we've been expelled from the absolute we should say exhaled, and now we will return to the Absolute. We are going to be inhaled, but only spiritually. Matter won't be able to get there. Only the light will return to the light. So we will come back then in the fifth round to the etheric universe, the etheric earth that we described before. So the etheric was the third round, and now the fifth is coming back. The sixth round, the sixth round, which is, will be again returning to the astral molecular universe. The Earth will become now molecular, will be a dead planet, but diminishing, diminishing, diminishing in its size. And finally, the seventh round, mental atomic again, ready to enter into the Absolute. So you can see all these aspects of manifestation of life are explained in a totally different manner than what scientists believe and are convinced that they are telling the truth. So the Big Bang Theory is just that. A theory. Please don't fall in love with it. Pay attention to other possibilities or manifestation of life. Life, again, can only descend from life. So, after we have described that life descended in a spiritual manner from the Absolute, and we've been allocated in different planets, in this case, our planet Earth, and then at the end of the planet Earth, we are going to return again, but without the vehicles, without the wardrobe of the spirit, without matter. Only as a spirit, we will return to the absolute. Now, let's come back to the point where we describe the seven races. In every planet, there are also seven races. Number seven, the law of organization of the universe. So, 300 million years ago, physically, we're talking about the cellular, cellular life on Earth. The cellular life, you know, is been evolving, of course, manifesting and also devolving. Remember, evolution, involution. Involution means devolution, returning to the original point. So let's begin now with the first human race that has nothing to do with the K people. Please listen to my words carefully. The first human race planted on earth, they were angelical beings. What's an angelical being, you know? We mentioned before in other lectures that there are two kinds of angels. Angelical beings lower than we are, 
we can call them the elementals of nature. All nature is alive, so these spiritual beings live within flowers, trees, within the mineral kingdom, within the air, within the water, within the ocean, within the fire, and within the earth. They are the elementals of nature, tiny little agent, angels that are lower than we are from an evolution point of view. And we have also angelical beings higher than we are. There are angels that are mortal, like you and me, people who will die eventually physically, but there are also angelical beings who are resurrected individuals immortal people. Some of them live in the parallel universes and others live among us, helping us without being noticed. The first angelical race that lived on earth, they were gigantic people, huge, eight meters tall. Their skin was black blue and they were androgynous. It means male and female within themselves. And they reproduced like human cells do, dividing and multiplying, so they could procreate life within themselves without sexual cooperation, because male and female forms were within themselves. The Bible speaks about them, but you know, in a very short manner, it says, Adam without Eve. Because in reality, Adam and Eve were within one human organism. But they were superior beings. They were immortal individuals. Hundreds of millions later, a second human race was planted on Earth. They were white, blonde, you know, also androgynous individuals, huge, tall, eight meters tall, and they reproduced again the way trees and plants do it. They develop life through their legs. This is why legs today have become attractive from a sexual point of view. You know, men have the tendency to look at women's legs and also women apparently do the same because uh, they look, you know, like sexual uh, a sexual manifestation, you know, of our own sexuality. But in reality, this individual, this sacred individual, these superior beings, these supermen, superwomen within one organism, they were androgynous. They reproduce through their legs. The third human race, the Lemurians, called the Lemurians, they were the foundation of the Oriental human race. Then they were different physically. They were also, you see, androgynous, but more than androgynous, they became hermaphrodites. Their genitals were already outside. They were external, not internal, like the case of the purely androgynous. So then after this, the Lemurians started to experience the division of the sexes. They multiply, you know, through themselves because they have both genitals within themselves. So babies started to come, male or female. Then we needed sexual cooperation. And here we are, you know, trying to understand the foundation of all human races, black, white, and oriental. Because the, the next human races, the fourth, the fifth, and all the others, are a combination of all these races. We are all very much interconnected. But there is a huge difference between these un real ancestors, the were superior beings, and the cave people described by Mr. Darwin and his followers, which have nothing to do with each other. We are going to explain in a few minutes, what happened to the cave people? Where did they come from? And why is it that, you know, scientists are convinced that they are our real ancestors when they are not? So 
all the first three human races, they were angelical beings, they were supermen, superwomen within one organism. And as we said, they were immortal individuals who were planted on earth. They were already, you know, able to reach the level of perfection within perfection in other, in other planets. And also, remember that we all descended from the Absolute. Because we all came from the Absolute and we are all going to come back to the Absolute in a spiritual way. Because we have bodies made of pure light. Our spirit is a body made of pure light. Now, when the Lemurians divided, you know, into male and female, there they were told by other superior beings the way they should practice sexual cooperation. And this is why the Bible explains that when Eve appeared on earth, that means Adam and Eve, now there were two people, before they, they were only one. When the Adams and the Eves connected and practiced sexual cooperation, they created families in a different way, something happened. This is an experiment, a cosmic experiment, that happens in every planet in the universe. Please try to remember my words. You see, this is not just a case of the planet Earth. This is an experience that we all have to ex have so we can really understand that life has a purpose. So when the Adams and the Eves disobeyed cosmic law, not all of them, not all of them disobeyed. You know, many of them obeyed cosmic law and they continue being here on Earth but living within the parallel universe, they live in the fourth dimension right now, which is called paradise or Eden. But those who disobeyed cosmic law, and in the future we're going to explain more details of what do we mean by disobeying that cosmic law? Well, essentially, the Adams and the Eves, coming from an angelical kingdom, coming from superior dimensions of space, these superior beings descended from a, we could say, a true human being's kingdom into the animal kingdom with human form. And here we are, convinced that we are humans when we are not, with human appearance, but with a strong animal psychology within ourselves, which is the same ego that we described before. And we are going to continue explaining in the next lectures. So basically, it's very important that we understand. And, you know, when we said that, Albert Einstein described clearly that science without religion lames, and religion without science is blind. We do agree with Mr. Albert Einstein because the Bible speaks about the fall of the Adams and the Eves. The problem is many people who study the Bible not the right way, never at the spirit of the letter, they try to memorize the Bible and repeat it without understanding its real meaning. They are convinced there was only one man and one woman, one Adam and one Eve, which is absolutely ridiculous with all respect. There were millions of Adams and millions of Eves. They used to be angelical beings and they lost the human stage. They lost the stage of grace. So they were expelled from the fourth dimension. Because, listen to my words carefully, all of us, without exception, we all live in all those parallel universes. We all live already now here within the mental universe or atomic. We all live within the molecular universe or astral. We all live within the etheric universe or fourth dimension. And we all live also, of course, within the cellular universe or physical or the three-dimensional universe. We are all connected with those parallel universes. The problem is we are not aware. We lost our capabilities as angelical beings 
because we descend really from those fallen angels. Remember my words. Our ancestors are not the cave people. They were supermen, superwomen that populated the earth at the beginning of all times. And then after they fell from a stage of grace, here we are. Our ancestors that were already fallen individuals continue procreating life and here we are. But we enter into a stage of degeneration. So the purpose of life, listen to this, is to come back to the original stage, to the original angelic stage. So we'll be able to come back to the absolute the right way. Not as a failure, but as a victorious a spiritual being that transcended all testing here on earth. And we were able to ascend. Even if we can come back higher than when we left, that's going to be a complete victory of the purpose of life, of our own life. Now, let's go into the fourth human races. Okay, the Lemurians were the third human race, angelical beings, the foundation of the oriental human race. You know, there is evidence of the Lemurian. You know that the Lemurian used to live in what today is the Pacific Ocean. Giants eight feet, eight feet high and, you know, beautiful people. And that evidence, you know, was found, listen to this carefully, that evidence was found in Greece recently. We are in, at the end of the year 2010, and a few months ago, somebody sent me a lot of information that came through the internet and through telephone calls. They sent me pictures of, you know, cemeteries of people found in Greece. Huge individuals whose head, whose head was the size of a half of our actual physical body. And um, I'll be ready to send that information to anyone who is willing to see and to see by themselves, to experience by themselves. So there is evidence that these giants existed. You know, they were called the Titans in many, you know, ancient religions. The Titans are our real ancestors. We are just tiny little guys that descended from them, but the cave people have nothing to do with being our ancestors. We will explain it soon about where did they come from, these cave individuals. So when the Lemurians collapsed and they lived in what today is the Pacific Ocean, the evidence of that their existence is today in Easter Island. You know what is Easter Island? They call Isla de Pascua. It belonged to Chile, South America, in the Pacific Ocean. And there you can see people travel from all over the world to visit this island because there are huge, gigantic heads made of stone. Who did that? You know, today it's very hard to be able to do that. If we believe that our ancestors were cave people, these poor cave people would have never been able to do that. So only superior beings, our true ancestors, knew how to do it. And they were also huge, gigantic individuals that made heads, you know, connected with what they used to be and as a legacy for the future, which is happening right now. Also, part of the ancient Lemuria, the Lemurian continent that used to be the Pacific Ocean and in the middle of huge catastrophes, because Mother Nature, Mother Nature, listen to this, lost the balance. When the Lemurians degenerated, when they fell, when they didn't respect cosmic law, they lost the angelic stage and they were destroyed by Mother Nature. Because they contaminated planet Earth the same way we are doing it today. So Mother Nature had to recycle our planet. Then the planet could continue staying alive and healthy. So the Lemurians were destroyed, those who collapsed, those who failed to the test of the divinity, which is going higher, 
And, you know, the Bible describes also them. The Bible speaks about Lem Sodoma and Gomorrah. Do you remember that? Those names? Even, you know, it explains how Lot, Lot, that was a leader, a spiritual leader of that time, his wife and his family, but in reality you are talking about the family, it's a group of individuals that respected divine law, they didn't abuse the law, and they were protected. So they were told where to, where to move, where to survive. And these people survived, and they moved into the fourth dimension where they are already there. They didn't lose their lives. They didn't become mortal. Many of them were immortal. And because they didn't fall. So the Bible described that the wife of Lot, a queen at that time, she was told not to look behind, but she did it anyway because she didn't want to lose her kingdom, her wealth, you know, her power. So her ego was very much alive and she was destroyed by Mother Nature. She became, you know, a person made of pure salt. You know, it means that she entered into the inferior dimensions of space, the submerged mineral kingdom that we also call Inferno. So we have to understand the Bible, you know, it's written in a codified language. To understand the Bible, you have to know alchemy and Kabbalah. We explained that before and we will continue explain it later. So the Lemurians, you know, were really connected with our real ancestors. So there we can see the first collapse and a huge gigantic globe, global catastrophe where, you know, the Pacific Ocean covered what used to be the continent, but it was already a purified ocean because it was already contaminated and through the boiling of the water, through volcanic ex explosions, you know, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, all kinds of catastrophes, the geography of the planet Earth changed. They were the third human race and the survivors created the fourth human race or Atlantis. The Atlantis became the fourth human race. Here we are. The Atlanteans are connected with us because they are not angels anymore. They are people like you and me. And it's important to describe something else. When you are an angel or a superior being, you have 12 senses minimum or more. 12 senses. Why do we have only five senses? We explained that before that we have seven endocrine glands that are already atrophied. But people who are not atrophied, their seven endocrine glands are illuminated. They are functioning beautifully, perfectly. They are strong, you know. They give life and also they give superior capabilities to perceive reality, to perceive Mother Nature, and to connect with other superior beings. Because they are closer to the divinity than we are. So our five senses are a manifestation of our poor stage of actual degeneration. So we shouldn't applaud ourselves, you know, the way most of people would enjoy doing it. We have to accept our mistakes if we really want to correct them. So the Atlanteans are closer to what we really are. At the beginning, the Atlanteans were also, they had a golden age. You know, it's important to describe that the first human race, the second and the third angelical humanities, especially the third at the beginning, before they collapsed, they lived in a constant stage of golden age. It means it was paradise on earth. Everything was perfect. Everything was living in peace, love, respect. All superior values were already in action, they were there. Now, when the Lemurians collapsed and they experienced a, a huge global catastrophe and most of the Lemurians died, perished in that catastrophe. Why did they perish? Because 
they descended from a stage of grace, they lost their capabilities to survive, they lost, I would say, their intelligence. Today, the concept of intelligence has become very twisted. We call intelligent to a person who is more astute to do bad things to others. Instead of calling intelligence to those who practice, you know, how to establish a perfect relationship with the divinity and with humanity. When we glorify war, instead of glorifying peace, there is something very wrong with us. So, the Atlanteans, at the beginning, had the golden age. That means angelical beings, people who ascend again to the angelical kingdom, which is the real human beings kingdom, or even higher than that. But after many, many years, millions of years of evolution and involution, the Atlanteans also experienced their own failures and Mother Nature had to restructure again. Mother Nature had to punish them because of their own faults. They degenerated planet Earth again. They contaminated the ocean. They destroyed everything. They became actually a very evil humanity and they used to live in what today is the Atlantic Ocean. There was a continent there, and that continent disappeared again in the middle of global catastrophes like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and all kinds of tragedies that destroyed most of, the, most of the human race of that time. Millions of people disappeared in the middle of those horrifying catastrophes. The Bible speaks about them also. They are, called, they are called the flood. You know, they speak about the Noah's Ark, but in reality, Noah's Ark has to be explained in a better way because there was never a big boat the way it's been described by many people who don't understand, you know, the Bible properly. Uh, the Atlanteans had a very advanced technology sometimes even more advanced than ours, actually. These people had the knowledge to travel to the moon and they established in the moon, uh, they even, you know, transform the environment of the moon for pleasurable, you know, trips. So people went there to do tourism and they recreated oxygen so people could stay there for a while and they, they came back. So today, can we do that? We're still very much behind that. And also, you know, they had, uh, they knew how to use the solar energy. And today they have found, you know, many people, many scientists have found in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean evidence of their civilization. Jacques Cousteau, the famous French scientist, who wrote many books and also had many interviews on television and, and magazines and radios, that incredible individual, he found evidence of the reality of Atlantis. Also in ancient Greece, Plato speaks about the Atlanteans and also there is evidence in the pyramids, the Mexican pyramids, and also in the Egyptian pyramids. So the trouble is the translator of those documents, the papyrus, you know, they don't understand because they are also written in a codified language. That codified language is, again, alchemy and Kabbalah, ancient sciences that we'll be able to describe and explain later in a, another lecture. So the Atlanteans experienced exactly what happened to the Lemurians. They were also destroyed because they didn't obey cosmic law. They were not as intelligent as they were supposed to be. When you respect cosmic law, the cosmic law will protect you. When you have no respect for the equilibrium of nature, the equilibrium is broken, so then you destroy yourself. So what is the intelligence there? And this is the tragedy of the Atlanteans, and we are making the same mistake today. So, the survivors of Atlantis, listen to this carefully, 
the fourth human race, they moved, they escaped to what today is Tibet and also the Gulf of Mexico. They were, you know, provided help. Superior beings who live on earth, the same angelical being that were our real ancestors, were helping them, but only those who eliminated the ego, the animal psychology that we created when we fell from a stage of grace. Those who destroyed the ego woke up their superior senses again, the 12 senses, instead of five. They became really intelligent and they knew how to survive because in reality they didn't care about themselves too much, they cared about everyone. Their philosophy was one for all, all for one, which is a psychology and philosophy based on love and respect for the divinity, nature, humanity, and ourselves. So the Atlanteans then moved to what today is, as we said, ancient Tibet, ancient China, and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, they were, as, as we said, they were alerted by superior beings that live on Earth, but also, listen to this carefully, extraterrestrial individuals traveling in their spaceships, because many of them wanted to abandon our planet, those who deserved to survive were invited to go to other planets where civilization more advanced than ours received them with a lot of respect and affection. So the extraterrestrial situation is not something new. You know, when Lot, the third human race, when the Lemurians collapsed, Lot and his family were escaping in the middle of the earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and tsunamis, the Bible describes that there was, you know, a wheel made of fire that descended from the sky, you know, to take them away from the catastrophe. Wasn't that a UFO? Wasn't that a spaceship coming from visitors from other planets that were helping us? Angelical beings that live in other planets, you know, who came to protect those who deserved to be protected. So again, those superior beings came at the end of Atlantis and showed them where to escape more solid lands that didn't collapse with a global catastrophe. Remember, when the two poles become the equatorial line, it's very hard to be able to survive because the entire geography of planet Earth changes drastically. So this is what happened to the ancient Atlanteans. And now we are making again and again the same mistake committed by the Lemurians and the same mistake committed by the Atlanteans. We are the fifth human race. We are the actual human race. Before we begin explaining more about us, it's important to know that we are getting closer to the end of the fifth human race and a new race will emerge from the ashes of this one the sixth human race. But at the very, very end, when the physical earth, the cellular earth will collapse, it will be the seventh human race. And that's going to be again an angelical human race. We can say it will be the harvest, the harvest, you know, of the seeds planted on our earth. And apparently, if we can try to predict the future, we are not learning the lessons of life, the lessons of history, because don't, we don't even know our real history. We have created an artificial history of the planet Earth and an artificial history of humanity. The time has come to be more real, more realistic, because if we learn to awaken our superior senses, the seven superior senses plus five will make twins, will be able to see the memories of nature. The memories of nature are allocated in the fourth dimension. In esoteric language they, language, they are called the Akashic records of nature. Everything that happens on earth, everything that happens in the universe is already recorded there. Very soon, Instruments will be developed to be able to see the fourth dimension. We are entering already the fourth dimension. 
with the creation of, you know, telephones, cell phones, internet, television, radios, we enter already the fourth dimension. Well, apparently, these instruments have been already created. If the superpowers have done it, they don't want to expose them to the public eye. Why? Because, you know, many things will be exposed. <laughs> so, if we expose our sins, our mistakes, our errors, we'll be in trouble. Nobody likes that, you know. People would prefer to keep them quiet. It's something similar to, you know, what's happening today with the WikiLeaks situation, you know. It's a tremendous international scandal. But there is something stronger than that, you know, which is the memories of nature. There is a moment that nobody will be able to deny what we have done with our lives, because we'll be there. When we die, actually, we spoke already about the lords of karma, the angels of cosmic justice, that judges us, all of us, after we die. Because we continue alive on the other side. So those angels of karma, when we are going to be judged on the other side, we will say, well, you know, I don't remember, I don't recall. They will say, okay, here it is. This is what you did. This is the crime that you committed. This is what you were thinking then. This is what you were doing then. And you cannot deny it because it's there. It's reality itself. Coming back into the K people, that according to Mr. Darwin and his followers are our ancestors, and also the monkeys and gorillas that are supposed to exist before the K people, and the K people, according to them, evolved from the monkeys. We are going to say that we disagree 100% completely. The reason for that is our true ancestors are angelical beings, superior beings. We carry, the proof is that we carry within ourselves the seven endocrine glands, atrophied, but they are there. It means that they existed in ancient times. And now, our, because we descended through evolution, we descended into a lower stage. The time has come now to ascend again, to recuperate the real human beings stage. Because right now we became intellectual animals. We don't like to be called like that, but this is closer to the truth anyway. We are intellectual animals. We are part of the animal kingdom right now. Different than the rest of the animals. But to become a true human, we have to transform ourselves and recuperate what our ancestors used to be. Now, the cave people and the monkeys and gorillas. When the Lemurians collapsed as a civilization, that angelical humanity, when the Adams and the Eves were expelled from paradise, it means they lost their 12 senses and they kept only five senses. So the Lemurians entered into a stage of degeneration. You know, what happened in us today, we are into a stage of degeneration. We don't see it because, you know, we've been already accustomed to that kind of lifestyle. But I have met personally people who have 12 senses. The founders of our school of Gnostic anthropology, they have, they had 12 senses or even more. So it is only normal to develop that and I, with the School of Gnostic Anthropology, teach people how to develop those seven superior senses. Plus five, make twelve. So, when the Lemurians collapsed, then, and entered into a stage of degeneration, and in the middle of the catastrophe, many, many people became isolated, because not everybody dies in, in one, you know, catastrophe especially when a catastrophe will last for thousands of years. For the Earth to regenerate, it takes thousands of years. So people became isolated, living in the mountains, and they escaped to the caves, escaping from tsunamis and, of course, earthquakes. So after thousands and thousands and even millions of years living there, of course, they degenerated more and more and more. 
especially when they forgot completely what was the real measure. The possibilities of ascending again, they, they had to fight against nature, they had to fight against prehistoric animals, huge, gigantic animals, people who lived in cities, now they had to live in the forest, in the jungles. And of course, they were exterminated slowly, but those who survived com continued degenerating more and more and more. So the monkeys, the gorillas actually, became the new species that emerged from these cave people. So the process of degeneration continued and continued until they disappeared. Monkeys eventually are the same cave people. And monkeys eventually will also disappear because they are a species in a stage of complete degeneration. People say that the chromosomes of a monkey or a gorilla are similar to the chromosomes of people. It is true, it is true, but they are more degenerated than we are. You know, listen to this carefully. We people, we are moving already, we are higher than monkeys, but we are moving already into, into the fifth round. Listen to this carefully. If you memorize what we said before, the fifth round will be coming back to the aesthetic, the aesthetic universe, the aesthetic planet Earth. It means we are returning to the great light, which is the absolute. So we have 48 chromosomes the way monkeys do, but scientists can see only, can perceive only 46 chromosomes within us. But the chromosomes of a monkey, of a gorilla, are very obvious. They are seen clearly, physically. But our chromosomes, only 46 can be perceived because the other two, listen to this, the other two are part of the fourth dimension. Because we started to move already into the aesthetic world or the fourth dimension slowly, slowly. We are the fifth human race, so we are not ascending anymore. This is why cancer is an illness, you know, connected with the cellular universe, but coming, listen to this, coming from the fifth dimension. Cancer is a molecular virus. And because, you know, our bodies try to expand because of our ignorance, because we disobey cosmic law, we are trying to expand, you know, through a wrong behavior in every aspect, thinking, experiencing emotions, hatred, you know, instead of loving, and also even our sexual life is wrong. So in our, you know, desperation to try to grow physically and expand more physically because of the seven deadly sins, and we are breaking more and more laws of nature. So instead of returning quietly, peacefully into the fifth round or the aesthetic universe at the end of the cellular planet Earth, we are fighting that. So cancer is a molecular virus coming from the fifth dimension because a cancer of cells is an expansion of the cells in a crazy manner. Well, it's hard to explain that, you know, with a few words, but in the future we'll be able to explain more about this. All illnesses come from a wrong lifestyle. Our real ancestors, the angelical beings, they knew no illness. Illness didn't exist. Now we have all kinds of illnesses. And even venereal disease is coming from sex between people and animals. There you can see how degenerated we have become. Now, so we don't descend from the cave people, but when the catastrophe strikes, the global catastrophe in the Atlantean human race, the same phenomenon repeated, which is the degeneration, the survivors that escape to the mountains in the middle of the earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and tsunamis, they also degenerated. So a different kind of 
you see, K people develop. But listen to this. The man of Cro-Magnon and the man of Nardental lived only 8,000 years ago. And the ancient Egyptian lived 25,000 years ago. And the Lemurians lived 18 million years ago. And you know, and when the Lemurians di disappeared, the survival from Atlantis that happened a million years ago escaped to Tibet and the Gulf of Mexico. So the pyramids of Mexico were developed at that time, a million years ago. They are much older than the pyramids in Egypt, which are only 25,000 years ago. So it's important that we explain all of that, that we don't descend from the cave people, we don't descend from the monkeys and gorillas. They are both a species, a species in extinction. And this is why the cave people are not here any longer. And the monkeys are still here, but they are the same cave people, grow, going down, down, down within the scale of involution or devolution returning to the original point, and eventually they will disappear. So, coming back now into the fifth, our actual human race, how after the catastrophe of Atlantis, we said the survivors lived in what today is ancient China, Tibet, Mexico, and even Peru. The Aztecs and the Mayan that developed their pyramids and the Peruvians that developed the, the Incas that developed their pyramids also in ancient Peru. They were all survivors from Atlantis, but they were angelical beings. They are sent, and this is why they survived, they are sent into a higher, you know, a stage of perfection. And right now we know nothing about ancient China. They are discovering now incredible temples incredible manifestation of that ancient civilization that also survived from the catastrophe of Atlantis. Now, did you know that we said that before, the, uh, the Tibetan language is the same Mayan language. So then there is a connection, both coming from Atlantis. So every race subdivides in seven sub races. So we, the fifth human race, you know, have had already or will have seven sub-races. So number one is again Tibetans, ancient Mexicans, Peruvians. The second sub-race developing what today is India. You know, when people speak about the flying carpets, you know, they try to describe that these people had superior senses. They knew how to move physically within space, within the practice levitation. They knew how to do it. We can also do it, but we have to learn how to do it. If we learn to develop our seven superior senses, we'll be able to enter into that perspective of life, a superior kind of life. The third sub-race of our actual human race were the Egyptians. You know, they were, they were at that moment, they were also very much advanced, but they were already entering. Listen to this. They were already entering into degeneration. Because the Egyptians, at the beginning, they had no slaves, but there was a moment that some pharaohs degenerated. They were also angelical beings reincarnated here on earth. But many of them fell, you know, again from that stage of grace because they disobeyed cosmic law, divine law. So they developed the ego. They became egotistic and they tried to develop some kind of an empire at that time. This is why we see that many of the ancient Egyptians, there were some of them, the pharaohs, they were really superior beings. They had the knowledge to develop these pyramids. Some of them, you know, had small spaceships. They knew how to make matter levitate. So they brought these huge gigantic rocks from far away through a very advanced technology because historians say they, they hadn't discovered the, the wheel. Well, what for do you need a wheel when you know how to levitate? 
You see, these people knew how to do that. The ancient Egyptians, they lived 25,000 years ago here on earth. Remember that time is relative. So after the Egyptians collapsed, what happened? The Greeks and the Romans appeared. They became the sub-race number four. The Greeks were already very advanced in many aspects. You know, they developed, they are actually, the legacy that came from them, you know, developed, you know, philosophy, they developed psychology, even anthropology is coming from that time. They developed democracy, law, you know, the codices of law that the Romans copied, imitated later, and now we are using the Roman codification and, and actually, you know, all the legal aspects of the West, Western law are coming from the ancient Romans. So, but the Romans already, even they created an empire, they were expressing a tremendous stage of degeneration because they became extremely egotistic. They wanted to dominate the world, you know, and all empires collapse sooner or later. The fifth sub-race became the monarchies. There were, you know, after the Romans as an empire collapsed, many, many small kings, small kingdoms that started to develop all over Europe, all over the world, you know, ancient China, Russia, France, German, Great Britain, Spain, etc. And they were the fifth human race. Then they started to invade other lands like America that at that time hadn't been discovered because when you have your five senses, which are a manifestation of degeneration, how can you perceive reality? You know, they had to rediscover planet Earth because they had forgotten our roots. Genetically, we entered into a stage of tremendous degeneration. So, the six human race today, we could say, is the Spanish language that developed in Latin America. Why are we talking about that? Because the Spanish Latin American people didn't mix, haven't mixed much with the rest of the world. Now, through immigrations, the Latin American individuals are moving all over the world, you know, because of wars, poverty, dictatorships, you know, all kinds of problems. Poverty also, people have escaped from Latin America and they are moving into the US, Canada, European countries. But the interesting part is that the Spanish are moving with their culture very much alive. Their language, people love the Spanish language. In the US is the second language. It's also a very pure language compared with the others because it's coming from Latin and Latin is a very divine language. So their Spanish Latin American people are moving into different countries with their dances, with their poetry. You know, two important or more than two important poets came from Latin America, you know, the last few years, like Pablo Neruda from Chile, and also a Colombian poet, you know, that also won the, the Nobel Prize of Literature. So the Spanish Latin American people are still in the process of mixing with other ethnic groups. So we could say this is the sixth sub-race and here we are right now because the seventh is emerging simultaneously. The seventh sub-race that is basically the amalgamation of all sub-races of all ethnic groups. This is happening all over the world at the same time. Europeans, European countries already experienced the, mix, the mixture of all races, Canada and US. The only problem is in the US, this amalgamation is beginning to have serious troubles and different ethnic groups are already fighting with each other. They don't tolerate each other any longer. Same thing with Europe. It's been mentioned in the news that 
you know, neo neo Nazi groups are burning the houses of people who came from the Middle East because they they don't want to tolerate them anymore. And of course, there is some kind of a civil war among different ethnic groups. So the experiment, the cosmic experiment, is not getting to a good conclusion. So, but in Canada, we still have that amalgamation of different ethnic groups. In the city of Toronto, 200 languages are spoken. And there is a still tolerance among, among all different ethnic groups. How long is it going to last? It's hard to say. But eventually, everything is collapsing because a new global catastrophe is happening, the end of a human race, but also the beginning of a new human race, the sixth human race, is coming. Okay? It's important to understand what's happening to us. So the truth should last. The, the truth should be our motor. We are searching for the truth and we are really willing to understand who are we, what are we doing here, what is the purpose of life, what is the truth story, the true history of planet Earth, and what is the true history of the human race. So, thank you very much for listening. It's been an honor to be here. So again, our main purpose is to share what we have learned. And if we are both searching for the truth, we are all searching for the truth, we are walking a similar path. Thank you again. Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You've been listening to E. Jim G. Ross, Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number six. And the website, of course, is rickyradio.com. We invite your questions by email at gnosticradio at gmail.com. <laughs>